Hello, my name is Simon Graham and I'm a PhD student at the University of Warwick in the Tissue Image Analytics Lab and today I'm going to present our solution to the Monusac challenge where we used Provenet, which is a network for simultaneous segmentation and classification of nuclei. So this work was done by myself and then in collaboration with Dang Vu, Mika Zwega, Sean Raza and Nasir Rajput. So in the presentation we'll first describe the task and the data set, then move on to some challenges and then describe our method and some training details and then finally conclude with some results. So the overall task they were given was to segment and classify the epithelial cells, lymphocytes, macrophages and neutrophils. So this is a task of importance because if we can locate these individual cells then we can better understand the role of immune cells in cancer. So the data set that we were given by the challenge organisers consisted of image regions extracted from the cancer genome atlas, where the organs in question were breast, kidney, lung and prostate, and all images were H and E stained, so stained with hematoxylin and deosin. All images were at 40 times objective magnification, and overall there were around 31,000 annotated nuclei. So here there were around 15,000 epithelial and lymphocytes, and around 600 macrophages and neutrophils. So as we can see, there is quite a significant class imbalance. The data was split into train and test, where in train we had 209 images from 45 patients, and then in test we had 101 images from 25 patients. So we can see here some example cropped image regions from the data set, where we have the epithelial cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes and macrophages. So you can see there is some evident texture in the epithelial cells, but also there is quite a significant variation from organ to organ in the appearance of these epithelial cells. The neutrophils show a multi-lobed appearance. Then in the lymphocyte cells, we can see that they're relatively homogeneous in appearance. So they all seem to have quite a dark pixel intensity. Then the macrophages, we can see that the nuclei also have some surrounding cytoplasm that can often be quite granular looking in appearance. Then the data set also has quite a significant variance in the size of the images. So this gives a good idea of exactly what we mean here. There's a very large image on the left and a very small image on the right. So some challenges that we faced during this challenge. First of all, we had to separate the touching nuclei. So not only did we have to segment, but we also needed to make sure that we knew exactly where the individual nuclei were. Second of all, we can see here we have an image showing all of the four categories and we had to make sure that we could effectively differentiate between the different categories within the data set. Then third, as we alluded to earlier, there is quite a significant class imbalance. So we want to make sure that we can perform well with this class imbalance in the data set. So what method did we use? So we used the Hovernet, which is published in Medical Image Analysis last year. And the network was built purposely for the task of nuclear segmentation in H&E images. So we have an input into the network where the network consists of an encoder for feature extraction and then three independent decoders. The encoder, as we can see here, is a ResNet 50. And then after features have been extracted, we then use three independent upsampling branches or decoders where each decoder is identical and they are all densely connected networks. So the first decoder predicts the nuclear pixels 
So in other words, it has a binary output as a prediction mask. And this is to try and differentiate the nuclei from the background. Then second of all, we predict the horizontal and vertical maps. So we'll explain what these exactly are in the coming slides. And then the third decoder is the nuclear classification branch that classifies each pixel as either the background or the type of nucleus. So the hover branch overcomes challenge one, which is to separate touching nuclei. The nuclear classification branch overcomes challenge two, where we want to differentiate between, between the different types of nuclei. And then to overcome the class imbalance problem, we use a multi-term loss function. So to separate clustered nuclei, what we do is we use the concept of horizontal and vertical maps. So we can see here, if we just show the ground truth of the horizontal and the vertical maps, where we have values ranging from minus one to one, from blue to red, we can see that it's quite clear where the separate nuclei are. So if we can use this within our network, then it gives a good indication of where the nuclei should be split. So to help predict this, we use a multi-term loss function at the output of the hover branch, where the first term is standard MSE, more mean squared error, and the second term is the mean squared error of the gradients of these maps. So we show the same, same image as before, but now also with the prediction. So the first term is the MSE between the prediction and the ground truth. So just standard MSE. We can see here that there is a significant difference in the pixels between neighboring nuclei. So therefore the MSE will have a large value because there's a change of sign. So it helps the network to focus learning in these areas. So this gives you LA, the first term of the loss function. Then for LB, we calculate the gradients of the predictions and the ground truth. And then we calculate the MSE on this. So this helps to enforce the straight lines that you see in the prediction. So then the second challenge, we had to try and differentiate between the different types of nuclei. And for this, we had a, a distinct upsampling branch to perform this classification. So if we show an ablation study that we performed for our HoverNet paper using something called the concept data set, where you can download it from the link below, um, we show that when we included this separate classification branch, we could significantly increase the performance, where if we look at the average over the classes, we can see quite a big jump in the performance. So for this, challenge three, we overcame the class imbalance by again using a multi-term loss function, where here at the output of the NP, so nuclear pixels, and NC, nuclear classification branch, we had the two terms, being the cross entropy loss and the dice loss, where we summed these together to give the overall loss for that branch. Then the introduction specifically of this dice loss helped overcome the class imbalance. So then overall, putting it together, we have two terms at the output of each of the branches. So in total, we have six loss terms summed together. Then once we have the three predictions, so the output of the NP branch, the hover branch, and the nuclear type branch, we then applied a series of post-processing steps to get the overall prediction. So we calculated the horizontal and vertical gradient maps by applying the Sobel operator. And then after some post-processing, we had the energy landscape and the instance markers. And then we applied marker-controlled watershed Get to get the instant segmentation mask, and then using the nuclear type prediction mask, we then got the instant segmentation and classification output. 
So some training details. We use an input size of 256 by 256 and output size of 164 by 164. We use rotation, flip, blur, scale, shear, and color augmentation. We use pre-trained weights on the pan nuke data set and use five-fold cross-validation. So the pan nuke data set is a data set that was curated within the tissue image analytics lab and it consists of around 200,000 nuclei and it gives, um, it provides a, a good way of pre-training your network to then use subsequently. So the network was trained in two stages. First of all, we trained only the one by one convolutions at the end of the decoder for 12 epochs with a learning rate of 10 to the minus four. And the reason for this is because we have a different number of classes in the pan nuke data set. And so therefore we had to train these final convolution layers. Then within stage two, we train the entire network for 50 epochs with an initial weight of 10 to the minus four, which were then decreased during training. For processing, we use a sliding window approach and then averaged all of the predictions over the five folds to give the overall result. So you can see here, we do quite a nice job of segmenting the epithelial cells. Also quite a nice job of doing the lymphocyte segmentation, where we can see by the yellow arrow, it also finds this neutrophil over on the right hand side. Does quite a nice job of neutrophil segmentation where we can see the multi-lobed appearance within the nuclei boundaries. And in these cases, it does quite a nice job of segmenting the macrophages. So the macrophage segmentation seemed to be the biggest challenge. And the reason for this was either because of indistinct boundaries, as we can see on the left, or when there are very clear nuclei within the middle, and so therefore the algorithm segmented those, but not necessarily the cytoplasm surrounding it. So overall, we reported for our experiments, the binary dice and binary PQ. So not taking into account the different categories. We then also calculated the multi-class dice scores, where we can see it seems to be the neutrophils that are easiest to segment. And in this case, it seems to be that the epithelial cells are the most difficult to segment. And then also we report the multi-class PQ scores where the most difficult to segment are the macrophages. And again, the easiest to segment are the neutrophils. The difference between image net training and pan nuke pre-training we can see here, if we just focus on the final column, that we can get slight improvement in the results. So looking forward, we want to try and improve the performance of the macrophage segmentation. So maybe we'll do, um, maybe we'll have an independent network for this. Also, we, we plan to extend the model to additional cell types, such as plasma cells and fibroblasts, to better quantify the, the cells within the tumour microenvironment and then also we want to apply this model to whole site images to quantify the TNE. And then this might help us to better understand the role of macrophages and other immune cells within the tissue. Thank you.